You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. Taken literally, the story of Noah is very far from a children's story. It describes what we would have to call the most nearly complete act of not just genocide, but also wiping out a species that ever happened. But can we take the story of Noah literally? Pictures like the one in the background suggest that very few people do, because these are the pictures we see of Noah's flood. Now, I know, lots of people spend lots of time and energy arguing about whether or not a global flood is possible. Personally, that doesn't interest me. Flooding the planet Earth would be dead easy for a god who made universes, millions upon millions of stars. <laughs> no problem to drum up enough water to drown the Earth. But, when we look at the plot, is it actually possible to take this story literally? Let's begin with sin and its consequence. Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 to 6, as the story begins. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made humankind on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. God sees that humanity is broken and rotten, the problem of sin. And, says to himself, Oh dear, making human beings was a terrible mistake. It grieved him to his heart. Verse 7. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created, people together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. Now, leaving aside the question of why the poor animals and creeping things get blamed, let alone the birds of the air, is this approach going to work? And could an omniscient God have failed to know that humans have a fatal design flaw? After all, God was the designer. If the design is broken, you see, a literal reading of the story of Noah's Ark is difficult because it suggests that God is not omniscient or is somehow not bothering to think ahead. Look at what happened. If it's the story of what actually happened, we have all sorts of problems. God says, first of all, that he'll wipe the slate clean. Then he changes his mind and keeps a small sample from which to breed a new world. Mr. and Mrs. Noah their sons and their sons' wives, and a, a roughly similarly sized sample of various species. Less of some, more of others, and we'll see why later. But why? If there was a design flaw in humanity, why keep a few as a starter culture for the new batch? Unless perhaps this is an extreme attempt at eugenics. Let's see what we get if we start with the very best. Now let's turn to the end of the story. Genesis chapter 8 verse 16 and following. The flood ends. Noah and his family are told to leave the ark, and they and the animals are told to be fruitful and multiply. Genesis chapter 8, verses 16 to 17. And Noah begins this new world with a massive sacrifice. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. God likes the smell of a sacrifice, and so he promises not to commit zoicide again. I say zoicide rather than genocide, because God actually came close to wiping out all species, not just one. That went well. All of us live happily ever after under the sign of the rainbow. Except, if we read on to chapter 9, verses 2 and following, Noah, the father of all humanity, the first new Adam, turns out to be a drunkard. We can't avoid the question, has God made another mistake? Was God's bright idea of trying eugenics a failure? Does the Bible's God make mistakes? Because if our literal reading of the story of Noah and his ark causes us to conclude that God keeps making silly mistakes, then our literal reading of the story of Noah's Ark is wrong. But suppose that the story of Noah's Ark is not so much here's what really happened as a what-if story. Think of the question, what if God decided to start again because human sin is so bad and uh, needs to be repaired? What if God decided to start again using only the very best humans available? Answer? We still stuff up because humanity is broken. That should be the terrible message of the story of Noah and his ark. That God deciding to start again with the very best specimens he can find won't solve the problem of sin. The problem of sin is deeper rooted in the very nature of human being and not even God can solve the problem of sin by selective breeding. Now that what if message or that, that message if the story is a what if story is part of the core central message of the Bible repeated again and again on page after page all through both testaments. That makes sense. Theological sense, and if you look at the world around you, it makes experiential sense. But
but reading the story of Noah and his ark as a description of what really happened, literally, makes no sense. It turns God into a bumbling idiot. That God is not the God of the Bible, nor is it really the God of most Noah's ark stories outside the Bible. Can we read Noah's ark literally? No, we can't. We shouldn't try to.